Video game Tom Foolery knows no bounds. Since the early days of the first arcade releases, developers have been coming up with ways to screw with their unsuspecting players. Quite often, this comes in the form of an unbeatable boss fight, a totally hopeless situation, usually right at the start of the game, where the underleveled and underexperienced player is faced with a fight that they simply cannot and should not win. But what if you did? Gone are the days of lamenting over the game's setup, demanding that you fail in order to proceed. Middle finger to you, invincible boss, this time we've come prepared. With 30 hours of mind-numbingly tedious grinding, countless consumables and powerful weapons, and it's time for payback. Don't give up on these impossible boss fights so soon, my friends, because even though something seems impossible, there's nothing you can't accomplish when you put your mind to it provided it doesn't break the game, of course. My name is Rach, and welcome back to What Culture Gaming. These are eight impossible video game boss fights you can totally beat. Eight, Chrono Trigger, Ocean Palace Lavos. It is entirely possible during the first forced encounter with the evil Lavos in the classic RPG Chrono Trigger to earn yourself an odd alternative ending by defeating this seemingly undefeatable boss. Encountering Lavos in the Ocean Palace sees you fight him with three times as much HP and significantly higher strength and speed stats. Unless you are facing it in New Game Plus, you are likely to get defeated pretty quickly, as is intended. However, get grinding, gather hundreds of tonics and ethers, and get ready to smash your face against Lavos for a good hour or so because it is defeatable. If your stats are high enough to survive the boss's attack spam, you can gradually chip away at its health and bring down the big bad nice and early, skipping most of the game. Completing this nets you a place among the dream team. It's a lovely fourth wall breaking easter egg that not many can say they've seen on a first playthrough. 7. Salt and Sanctuary – The Unspeakable Deep the first boss in Salt and Sanctuary is another absolute nightmare, one that you only get one shot at and is almost certain to kill you on a first playthrough. The game begins with the player character being attacked upon a ship by a giant, watery Cthulhu. You'll likely be defeated and the unspeakable deep will destroy the ship. Unless, of course, you aren't defeated. Surprise, surprise, however, absolutely nothing changes and you are shipwrecked regardless, with the in-game cutscene text still alluding to you losing the fight. Hooray! <laughs> to be fair, you do net yourself around 8 to 9 levels worth of experience points, as well as some precious upgrade items not readily available in the early game. So go ahead and strip down to your 25% equipment weight and proudly display your patience in a cabinet by earning yourself this tough trophy. 6. Final Fantasy 2 – Kane Highwind Kane is a companion and playable character in Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 4's western release. Although being Cecil's childhood friend, he goes missing, becoming mind-controlled by Golbez only to betray Cecil and attack him. In this US version of the game, Kane is intended to be invincible when Cecil fights him for possession of his crystal. He sports an insane 60,000 hit points, which is a ridiculous amount of health for an enemy so early in the game, especially considering you're hitting him for around 100 damage per attack. As I'm sure you can imagine, you are entirely expected to lose this fight with your former ally. Unless, of course, you decide to combine a few dozen hours worth of level grinding to get Cecil up past level 40, as well as unequip all of his armor except for his shield, which will make Kane's jump attack miss virtually every time. Combined, this allows you to slowly but surely sap away at Kane's massive health pool. To say that this takes a long time is pitching it lightly, but it can be done. If you were expecting a secret ending though, or even some kind of different dialogue in the following scene, you will be sorely disappointed. 5. Super Mario World 2 – Yoshi's Island – Kamek the evil Magikoopa Kamek returns to continue his kidnapping streak. He berates Yoshi before every boss fight, hurling verbal abuse at the innocent babysitter and magically enhancing bosses to attack us. All in all, he's a bit of a nuisance, but more annoying than actually threatening. That is, until the last stage. Featuring a side-scrolling segment with Kamek, the wizard is invulnerable to attacks and vanishes whenever Yoshi comes close, so is technically unkillable. 
but there is a way to kill him during this side-scrolling portion of the game. Kamek attacks you by transforming blocks into enemies. It is possible, although very difficult, to position him so that he is standing on a block above a bottomless pit and then make him transform the block that he is standing on, causing him to fall down and die. Oh, I shall... 4. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Genichiro First Time the intro to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is remarkably gentle, easing you into the mechanics and regularly rewarding you for keeping up with its combat. But then, at the end of the tutorial, From Software remind you that it is in fact a Dark Souls cousin. Genichiro Ashina awaits you in a beautiful meadow and ambushes you in a tutorial boss fight that you are completely and utterly unprepared for. You are, of course, supposed to lose this battle and you will fight Genichiro once again much later on in the game. He may seem impossible and even though you are technically supposed to lose the fight, he is absolutely beatable. Doing so will require a huge amount of skill and meticulous memorization of his every move, as well as a few dozen restarts, I'm sure. Sadly, whether you beat this terrifyingly difficult first boss tease or not, the outcome is always the same. Win the fight and you'll have Genichiro on his knees when suddenly you are distracted by one of his ninja buddies throwing a shuriken at you and you'll have your arm sliced off anyway. But then a bonus cutscene is better than nothing and along the way you most certainly got good. 3. Super Mario Bros. 2 Fanto Fantos are terrifying, invulnerable enemies that lay dormant, guarding their treasure. They appear as semi-common enemies throughout Super Mario Bros. 2, often in caves or inside jars. They are immobile, part of the scenery, until their precious keys are picked up by Mario, Luigi, Peach or Toad and then they ruthlessly begin to pursue the player. They cannot be avoided and they cannot be killed. They can only be escaped by using their key to open its locked door or by dropping the key and simply leaving it behind. However, there is a way to dispatch these childhood nightmare fuels by combining a stopwatch and a superstar. Collect four cherries, pick four large vegetables, and then pick the fifth to get the clock to stop time. Get another cherry to get an invincibility star, and then while the Fanto is frozen, headbutt it to dispatch it. Before you celebrate too much, however, just be aware that a new Fanto will appear as soon as you travel into the next room, if you're still carrying their key. 2. Demon's Souls – The Vanguard the great, hulking vanguard of Demon's Souls will easily swatch you in just one hit, sending you straight to the Nexus and this is exactly what the developers intended to happen. But is he killable? Absolutely. You'll only get one shot at beating this guy at this point of the game and the giant demon has the instant advantage of taking you completely by surprise. After a tutorial level about as dangerous as Rich Hudson covered in cotton wool, Vanguard comes stomping towards you. He boasts ridiculously timed weapon swings, so keeping your cool and getting the dodge timings just right is the key to overcoming this demon. Persist and prevail and you will be rewarded with the demon's souls and an arc stone that warps you to a new area. You'll find a lovely collection of treasures that are normally difficult to obtain this early in the game. You can pick up the treasures from the corpses only to then turn around and be smacked in the face by the dragon god and then become one of those very same corpses yourself. Poetic. Number 1. Devil May Cry 5 Eurizen the tutorial boss at the start of Devil May Cry 5 takes the form of the seemingly unbeatable Urizen. The first time you meet the Demon King in the prologue, you can in fact defeat him, though it is simply very, 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 very difficult. Doing this rewards you with a super secret early secret super ending though, unlocking the next difficulty level and a nice little achievement or trophy to prove it. In battle, Urizen will sit upon his throne, balancing on the weight of his enormous health bar and using a magical crystal to protect himself with a barrier, all the while bombarding you with various energy projectiles. Dodge his bullets and his laser beams and chip away at his crystal. Once it's down, you can attack Urizen directly as he attempts to repair it. However, where you might be expecting an epic cutscene, DMC5's response is a completely self-aware screen, showing text that basically says, yay, you did the thing, yay, everything's great, it's fine, thanks, well done. 
It's a massive kick in the face to those who worked so hard to build the skills required to beat an unkillable boss at minimum level and with no upgrades, further stressing the importance that the devs really did not mean for you to kill this thing. But doesn't that just make it all seem even more worth it? What a paradox. There we have it, those were 10 impossible boss fights that I believe that you can beat. Go on, you know you want to. Couple hours worth of grinding, ah, you'll be fine. Thank you so much for watching, guys. My name has been Rach. You can follow me on Twitter if you like at don't rage quit. You'll be sure to have an awesome day, guys. You're all amazing. Bye.